So good afternoon. Uh, so the last few times I have been giving the BBC, I was going through this uh, verse from the Diamond Cutter Sutra or the Vajra Cutter Sutra, um, where the Buddha talks about uh, conditioned things, impermanent things, which means just about everything we deal with in our life. And he gives these nine different similes to help us understand how they don't exist as they appear. You know, they appear solid and permanent, inherently existent, objectively existent, but that isn't the case. So, um, so today I'll talk about the fourth simile, which is an illusion. So the verse goes, a star, a, a mirage, a flame of a lamp, an illusion. So this is the fourth simile. And uh, you've probably heard, if you've um, listened to teachings by Tibetan lamas or read books about Tibetan Buddhism, they talk about this kind of magician who, I don't know if they still exist in India, but in, apparently in the past they would exist and they would do these magic shows where they would take some simple object like a pebble or a stick and then um, recite some mantras, and the mantras would cast a spell on the audience, the people observing this magic show, such that they would see this little object as like an animal, like a, a horse or an elephant. And it seems it was so realistic that people would react emotionally. They might be afraid of it, or they might have attachment to it, and even be willing to hand over money to buy this horse. <laughs> um, so this, this, this uh, analogy comes up often in the teachings, especially the teachings on emptiness, because it is said that um, there's three different kinds of people viewing this situation. There's the ordinary people who got under the spell of the magician and would see this horse and were totally, you know, believing that it was a real horse. That's one kind of person. The second is the magician himself or herself. They too would see the horse, but they know it's not a real horse. So it appears, but they're not caught up in the, in the illusion that it's a real horse. That's the second. And then the third person would be somebody who comes along later after the spell was cast and wasn't affected by the spell. So they don't see a horse at all. They, all they see is a pebble or a stick and they wonder what everyone's making a big fuss about. <laughs> um, so uh, in, in the book Insight into Emptiness, Kensu Jambatekchok says that a modern version of this uh, analogy is television or movies. So probably most of us haven't witnessed this kind of magic show, but we've all seen plenty of television and movies. <laughs> and uh, so you have this screen and then on the screen you can see people and cars and animals and all kinds of things happening. And when we're little children, we don't understand how it works and we can you know react to it as if it's real or if you take somebody from a very remote area the jungle who's never seen a tv or a movie before and it's their very first time seeing it you know they would believe it's real it's true so that's one way of seeing the tv or the the movie um seeing these appearances and believing that they are real and then emo reacting emotionally getting uh, frightened if it's something scary, getting angry if it's some bad person, getting excited if it's some you know wonderful thing going on. Um, and then when we grow up and we understand what TV and movies are all about, how they work, we can look at the screen and you know see what's going on and no, it's not true. Yeah. So even if somebody gets murdered in the movie or the TV. Uh, show, you know, we're not going to call the police and say, hey, somebody just got murdered there. Come in and <laughs> get them. <laughs> so we see it. We have the appearances are there, but we don't believe in them. And, and so that's the second type 
a person or second way of seeing him. And then if there's if the TV's turned off and somebody comes along and just sees a blank screen, <laughs> you know, they don't even see the appearances. Okay. So so this analogy, uh, whether you want to use the magic show or you want to use TV or movies, this illustrates um, three ways of seeing phenomena, like you know, our bodies, the bodies of others, all the things we see in the world around us. So one way of seeing everything is as they appear to us. Things, you know, as explained in Buddhism, things appear as if they are real and solid and existing from their own side, inherently existing and independently existing and so on. And uh, so that's how things appear to us, us meaning ordinary beings. Maybe some of you are beyond that, but I know I'm still an ordinary being, so I still see things as if they're real. And I totally buy into that appearance again and again and again, even though I've heard so many teachings on emptiness and I've thought about emptiness and I've even talked about emptiness, but still, you know, things still appear very vivid, very real, and I, you know, buy into them. And then, um, so that's the first type of person. And the second type of person would be a person who has realized emptiness, like an aria, we call uh, that kind of that type of person, an aria, somebody who's had a direct realization of emptiness. So they know that way of appearing isn't true, it's false, it's a mistake, just like an illusion, just like a TV program, just like a magic show. So these things still appear as if they're inherently existing, but they don't buy into it, they don't believe in it, so they don't get caught up in all the emotions that normally we do. Um, And then the third type of person, which would be like the person who doesn't see the magic show or doesn't see the images on the TV. This would be, we could, you, we could say the, uh, an example of the Buddha. So the Buddha um, no longer has even the appearance of things as inherently existent. And if, so, of course, they don't believe in things as existing in that way. Okay. And also the third type of person could also be an Arya when they're in meditation. So during meditation, when their mind is absorbed in this meditation on emptiness, then all appearances of inherent existence disappear. They don't even appear. It's only when they come out of meditation, then things again appear inherently existing, but they don't believe in it, in that appearance. <clears throat> so... That's the the story behind this this analogy of the illusion, and um, it it can be helpful for us, especially if we do have firsthand experiences, which we do, of movies and TV, and maybe also we've been to magic shows and we've seen you know things happening that seem inexplicable, and uh, so. Uh, mo- probably many of us are like that first type of person who sees things as real, objectively existing, inherently existing, and we usually buy into that, and then we get caught up in our emotions. We get attached or excited about the attractive things. We get angry or you know, have aversion, hatred for the unpleasant things, the bad things, and we may be frightened about things that seem scary. So then under the influence of these emotions, our mind gets very, you know, in turmoil and we might also act out these emotions in our behavior, uh, body and speech, and then we create karma to have even more problems and more suffering in the future. So it's not easy to really understand emptiness, of course. (laughs) We've all made effort at, uh, at doing so over the years and it's still rather elusive, but even to take a step back from the way things normally appear to us and question, you know, do things really exist that way or not, even doing that much is very, very helpful. And one thing I find really helpful is when I do get caught up in attachment or excitement about something attractive or aversion, something unattractive, I just ask myself, if that object really existed the way it appears, everybody else would see it the same way that I do. And if I just, you know, pay attention to people and how they respond to that person or that object, or sometimes just 
listening to people and what they say, what kind of comments they make about that person or that object, you can easily see that not everybody sees it the same way you do. <laughs> the, the, the object or the person that you find so disagreeable, so unpleasant, so irritating, somebody else thinks, fantastic, oh, I really like that person. So that sort of wakes you up from your trance of, you know, believing inherently existing, irritating, bad person. Or the other way around, if it's something you find really attractive, really interesting, really exciting, you know, and somebody else shows some aversion or disgust or like, yeah, <laughs> again, you know. So that kind of thing is really helpful, at least to start questioning, you know, do things really exist the way they appear to me? And then, of course, we're very, very fortunate that we've had access to teachers and teachings and meditations uh, that help us understand emptiness and how to progress in our understanding of emptiness. So anyway, this is another of these illusions, the, these um, uh, similes that the Buddha pointed out to help us understand how things don't exist the way that they appear. That things are like an illusion, like a magic show, or like a, a TV program, a TV or movie. Okay, thank you.